did a little bit of, of work up here just to um, kind of increase the natural logarithm, um, but you know it's not as necessary um, in terms of like creating a zero way right now. Um, it would be good to just really improve this and what it says to like make it easier. Or if you have any questions. So we are using an example where you just have to look up the log of a number of times that actually you could defend. So let's let's do the natural log of the natural log of x squared plus three. Okay. I want to find the derivatives. So let's remember the old wiggles with it. So, how do I think the derivative of this thing? That's my first step. Do I take the derivative of this part first, or do I worry about the natural log first? We worry about the natural log first. It's on the x, okay? So, again, what's the derivative of natural log of just x? Good. So, I'm going to do the derivative of natural log of x squared plus 3, which is going to be 1 over x squared plus 3. Okay? But, um, we, again, since that's not x, we have to multiply by the derivative. Stick on the inside, right? So now we worry about this. So what's the derivative of x squared plus 3? 2x. Okay, yeah. um, If you want to put it on top, you can. It would be nicer. I might write it. Uh, any questions on that? I hope this is this is pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive here. Um, Um, here's our derivative, okay? So we do the same thing, right? We're just going to take, we're going to do one over that thing and then multiply by the derivative of that thing. It'll take us five years to do it. Um, so instead, right, the nice thing about, we want to use the nice things about, oh, yeah. this is the KX. Um, this doesn't have to be that hard. We can make this a whole lot simpler to work out, right? If we just use our logarithm rules, right? Um, which, right, we have things dividing, things multiplying, things to a power, right? And the logarithm has ways to work with all those, right? So let's, let's expand this first, right? Let's just take some time and expand this logarithm out, okay? So maybe I'll, I'll, And let's write it um, times square x over x to the four times. Okay. What's my first step in expanding this? 
right? If, so I want to I want to write this just the sum of a bunch of logarithms, not one big one. So what's my first step? What should I do? There's options. I think there's one that's probably the easiest to do. Good. So we're going to subtract them. And what we mean by subtract is inside the logarithm, they're dividing, right? And when we have two things dividing inside a logarithm, we can just rewrite it as the natural log of the max minus the natural log. Okay. Now what? Yeah. So now we're gonna we're gonna use our rule, our first rule, which is the natural log of x y is equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of y on each of these, right? Now be very careful. There's a minus here, correct? So when I take this and split it up. This correct. Is what is what I just did there correct? Minus an, an actual log of x to the fourth plus an actual log of x minus one. No. no. Why is it not correct? Yeah, good. So the minus is in front of this whole thing, right? So when you if you expand it, you can't just say, oh, it's in front of this first one. It's got to be for both. I'm subtracting the whole thing, right? So that's where we got to be careful. Okay, this one is just going to be the natural log of tan of max cubed. Okay, and we have a lot of powers here, um, right, inside each one, right? But again, we still have another rule to use, right? So let's, someone help, help me as we kind of go through and bring those powers down each time, so. So what's so let's go to the first one. How can I rewrite natural log of tan x cubed? So three natural log of tan x. Good. Yeah. Good. So it's it's x to the one half, right? First, we want to rewrite that square root the cube root is, is to the one half power, um, or in the cube root case, the one third, kind of what we talked about earlier um, in the first section. Um, we're going to write that one half down. Okay? What is the natural log of, how do I rewrite x to the fourth? 4ln x. Good. Okay. I'll do this one. Hmm? We have this, right? This is going to be a thousand times easier to work with than the original thing was. Because now we just do each one individually. Right? And, and for the most part, like notice, we have two natural log of x's, right? So, I mean, that's, those are just going to be one over x. So I can even combine them now um, if I wanted to, right? Anybody, what's one half minus one is four? We have the derivative of three times the natural log of x minus, so one half minus four, yes, is going to be seven over two um, times the natural log of x. And then minus root two times the natural log of x. Okay, so let's take the derivative of each term. So how do I do the derivative of the first one? Right, so what's the derivative of the natural log? It's one for x, right? What rule do we have to use here? Not product rule, but remember if you just have a constant. For your derivative, that doesn't that doesn't matter, right? It, it it's right because what is the what's the derivative of three? Zero, right? So if you were to do product rule, you would have your a function times zero, right? Which would go away. So if you just have a constant, it just hangs out. It just stays around. So I'm just going to have the three hanging there. It doesn't do anything. So let's just focus on the natural log of tangent. So we said it's one over x, right? Typically, we have a tangent. What rule do I have to use? If I have something besides x inside my function, chain rule. Good. So this is going to be we have to do one over tangent, right? 
As always, if you're doing the derivative of a natural log, you do one over the thing inside times the derivative of tangent, which is long. Secret squared. Good. That's an interesting one. You must have drilled that to your brain very <laughs> Um, okay. Now let's go to the next part. How do I take the derivative of natural log of x? Just one over x, right? We don't, that one's not even, not even too bad. It's, um, it's just natural log of x. So it's seven halves times one over x in that case. Okay. Again, not product rule. You don't have to worry about that. Um, if you do a product rule in your test, just because you forget, that's okay. Um, but I just want to try to see if it works. <laughs> For the inevitable result. Okay, how about this last term here? Um, this one just be one over x, right? Because we have because it's x minus one inside, right? Yep. So I'm gonna have minus root two times what? Oh, one over x minus one. One over x minus one times what? Times one, right? Because it, it's still the derivative of that thing is still one. But um, so we'll just do one for the test. Okay, so this combined as you wish is the derivative of okay. So not that it always be bigger like that, but you can always expand first, right? When you're doing the derivatives of your natural logarithms. Okay. Any questions thus far on that? Is that pretty? Does that make sense? What if you choose not to expand? You have the complete freedom to do that. Um, I just want you to still enjoy life afterwards. So, <laughs> but you don't have to. Like you, you could you could use quotient rule with this thing and and really just power through it. Um, it would just it would just be a mess. Of life. Um, so. It gives a lot of derivative examples in the book. If you want to look at more of them, you can. It's just it's the same story over and over again. Um, I mean, you can always talk about like maybe I'll do a real quick one of. Uh, remember our calculus stuff. If I have let's say x squared times uh, the natural log of x. How do I take the derivative of this thing? What rule do I use? So we will use we'll use a bit of both. Yeah, there's so the big picture here is product rule, uh, but we will need to use a little change rule here on this three minus one. Okay, so using product rule, right? What what's this going to look like? Okay, so do we want to take the derivative of this term first or this term first? Yeah, maybe we'll just do this one first. Okay, what's the derivative of x squared? So x, good. What do I multiply that by? My product rule? Yeah, that part stays the same, right? We do the derivative of, of one times the other plus, and then we reverse the rules, right? So now what do I want to go to? What do I got right here? It's gonna be yeah, the derivative of this term. How do I find the derivative of the natural log of three minus x? Kind of here then. One over three minus x. Times negative one. Because the x, you take the derivative of the thing, you have it's negative one time. And so this, again, if you want to just redistribute this negative one, um, I get what it is. But that is the answer. Okay? Right? So again, um, a lot of the same rules apply, right? The big thing is just remembering how the natural log works now, right? This, this chapter is just going to be a game of here's another function. How do you take the derivative? Here's another function. How do you take the derivative of that? And then you just pilot with all your other rules you know. Okay? I might have to review those functions a bit, of course, or introduce new ones in the case of uh, 6.7. But, uh, 
otherwise it's not too good. Okay? Any questions on the derivative side of thing? Okay. So this chapter, this section also gets into integrals, um, but I'll tell you right now that um, if you're imagining, you may be picturing in your head something like, oh, if we're going to learn how to take the integral of like the natural log of like just the natural log of x or something. Um, but this is going to have to wait until uh, chapter seven for some of these. There are some we can do, um, which is what we're going to talk about now. So we'll do a those example brief. We're going to do okay. So let's do the integral, and this is just indefinite, right? We talked about definite already, which is a to b. This is an in indefinite integral, which means that what do I should what should I put on the end of this? Plus c. A plus c. Okay. Don't forget a plus c. We don't plug numbers. And this is going to be I'll do x over um, x squared minus four. Okay, so this is our integral. <laughs> so, I think the first question should come to mind of how exactly does this relate to this section? Um, but what, I don't know, does anybody have any methods in mind maybe to do this problem? Any ideas of what we could do here? You could break it up so it's one over x squared minus four at this time. So, so um, if if we had if the problem was this, I'd be completely on board. Um, unfortunately, when we, whenever we have, if you have something adding or subtracting the denominator, the numerator can't split to each piece. Um, it has to. That only happens if you have like just one thing in the denominator that you can split it. Do you have a? Um, there's actually a way that that might that could work, but again, we won't learn how to work with that until a later chapter. So there's an easier way. U substitution. Yeah, let's try some U substitution. What would you be? X squared minus four. Go. So, u sub works absolutely, and that's because, hey, look, we have an x dx here, we have an x here. Fantastic. Okay, now, um, whenever it comes to u substitution, I know there's like a few different variations of how you can apply it. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, depending on which person, which way you might have learned how to uh, operate with it. Um, typically, what I like to do, and what I kind of teach people is I say, I have this inside my integral, right? I have this thing. And so whatever happens over here, I want it to match with what's up there, right? So I have this two here, that's the issue, right? So how do I fix that? Yeah, we're gonna say so. One half. Yeah, so, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put, yeah, so I'm gonna put, I, I think I see what you're saying. So this is again like where because so what I typically do is I say okay let's divide the two over and so I'm going to get du divided by two is equal to x dx, right? Another possible option, right, is to say okay well I could put you know if I want two x I'll just make it two x, but obviously I can't just multiply two I have to multiply by one, and then that would match up as well. So there's there's really a few options. You could even, if you wanted to, take this um, and I'll take dx and get it by itself. So I would get du over 2x and plug it in and that would work as well. Okay. Um, to keep consistent, I'll probably just stick with this way uh, so not, you know, confuse of like having to talk about each one each time. But it's up to your discretion. I really don't mind um, just as long as it's correct. Don't do it. You sub where it trick it just doesn't work. Um, I would not really appreciate that. <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, um, so yes, we have u equals I don't know why I erase that. That's okay. Du is two x dx. So I say for for now, I'm going to take I'm going to get the x dx part by itself. So I get x dx 
do a work. So that turns my integral into, so now I'm going to have 1 over u, right, because it's 1 over x squared minus 4, times x dx, d over 2, right? Which I can just take that 1 half now and bring it out to the front. So I get 1 over 2 times the integral of 1 over u du. Okay. Now, how this relates to the natural logarithm, of course, is what is, right? We know that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So, what is the integral of 1 over x going to be? Natural log. Yeah, we'll see. You just go backwards, right? The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. So the integral of 1 over x is natural log. We'll see. Because okay. um, there could be a, a constant involved here. Right? So that would be my, that's why I want to use here, right? It's u instead of x, but it's still the same idea. So what's the integral of 1 over u du? So we, and, and I'll leave the one half here, one half natural log of u. I'll see. Am I done? Is that it? Are we over? The u back. Yeah, we, we still have to put the u back in, right? Because we didn't start with u, we start with that. So, final answer is going to be so the integral of x over x squared minus 4 dx equals. 1 half times the natural log of x squared minus 4. With one slight modification. I'm going to put it after that. Now, the reason I'm doing that. Right, the reason why you want to have that, the reason why we need that, and if you don't, I probably won't really take up. But the issue, the issue that happens, right? If I'm taking the derivative of the natural log, right? Now this kind of comes back to the domain of reach discussion. What is the domain of, of the natural log of x? Anybody remember? Zero to infinity, absolutely zero. Good. Yeah. So that's the domain of that function. Okay. And we don't need to worry about the range too much. Okay. What is the domain of one over x? Typically. Everything except zero. Everything except zero. So you're all people will set off all, all the numbers is on the right track. But we don't include zero, right? Because one over zero is undefined. Right? So this is the domain of one over x, right? So what happens is and this happened with the whole, you know, similar to the square root of x, x squared thing from earlier, is when I take the derivative of the natural log of x, I can safely say 1 over x, because, well, I mean, we're in that domain, so it's okay, right? I'm just going from 0 to infinity, and so the derivative would also be used valuation of that section, okay? However, when I'm integrating 1 over x, right, 1 over x is this domain by itself. Right? And the, the graph even looks like like this. So when I integrate it, if you just say, oh, well, it's, well, it's natural log of x, you have a problem. Because, yes, it's true that this side of it, so on, um, it's true that the right side of it is the natural log of x. What about this whole negative side? We can't just leave that part out, right? We have, we have a whole other half of the graph to worry about. So the way to account for that is just to put absolute values, because um, the absolute value makes it so it's, and so that would be okay? So here's the key thing. If you're integrating and you get a natural log, put an absolute value, like inside it. If you forget, that's OK, but really try to remember, um, because there is the technicality here. That can cause some issues. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, again, that doesn't really affect too much what happens moving up to it, but really just remember it's like with the plus C, just like, oh, it's natural one. 
And sometimes it doesn't matter. Um, like if I have x squared plus four plus, for example, why wouldn't that matter? Why wouldn't the absolute value matter in that case? It'll never be. Yeah, it's, it, it won't. It won't ever be negative. So the absolute value is just going to keep it. It's just positive still. So the absolute value doesn't really matter. Uh, but in the x squared minus four case, you might have some. So you want to worry. Okay. Um, let's see. We have about four minutes left. Again, there's a lot more examples um, in the book that you can look at. I'll point. I'll point to one real fast. Just so you can think about it, um, which is maybe something like okay. This is still completely possible for us at this moment, right? Um, but we just have to, you know, we still have to use our methods that we know wisely here, okay? What do we think about this one? Any ideas on this guy? Uh, that would be great, or could be great, but we don't know energy in parts yet. Not until chapter seven. So um, that'll be that'll be next week after the test. So we can't use that. We can't use that. Well, what do you think? What should you do? Yeah, dx over x basically, or whatever x dx is. Okay, do we have one over x dx up there? Absolutely. And so we just get one over u du. What's the integral of one over u? Ln of u. Ln of u. I guess technically the absolute value of u. What's u? Okay. So it's natural log of natural log. Okay. So if you see a natural log in there, you just try to like think about, oh, is there a use sub I can use to do this? You know what? What can I use to do this? Okay. Real quick, last thing. Sorry, I, I don't want to keep around for too long, but I do want to cover this for a sec. Um, if you want a bigger example, turn to the book. The book is a huge one. Um, just to show you how this works, but sometimes I have things like this, and I want to find the derivative of, of this function, right? But I can't use power rule, right? Because there's there's literally like an x and the power as well, so that doesn't work out, and I don't know anything else to work with this yet. So there's such a thing called Logarithmic differentiation, which says that if my problem looks, you know, imagine if you know the example I gave from earlier with all the, the tangent to the third power and all that. Um, if you didn't have the natural log on that, but you just had it by itself, and you're asked to find the derivative of that, it's possible, but it still would take a while, right? So the question is, is, is there an easier way to do it? And yes, there is, right? Because even if there's not a natural log on the problem to break things down, I'm just going to apply one myself. So let me write this again. And I'm going to apply a natural log to both sides, right? It's a function. So as long as I do it to one side, I do it to the other. That's fine. So on the left side, I get the natural log of y here. What can I do with the x? This x bar. Bring it out. So I get x times the natural log of x. Okay. Now this is more manageable, manageable, right? I can take the, the derivative of the right side pretty easily now because we did an example like that earlier, um, and I can also do the left. Okay. Um, just remembering, what do we call it when we're taking the derivative of like of y as well? What is it? What is it? Implicit. Implicit. It's called an implicit differentiation. So whenever we're doing implicit differentiation, right? Remember, so I'm going to take the derivative, and so the derivative of the natural log of y, right? We do you do as as if it's x, right? So what's the derivative of the natural log of x again? 
So we have one over y, but then I can multiply by what? Dy dx. Yeah, dy dx, which is what we're looking for in this case, right? And this is going to be equal to what's the derivative of x times the natural log of x? Natural log of x plus one. Good. So I'm going to do the first, I'll, I'll do the derivative of x times natural log. So that would be one times the natural log of x plus x times the derivative of natural log over x, which is going to be the natural log of x plus one. Right? So if I want to solve for dy over dx, I simply just, right, it's one over y right now. So what should I do to move that y over to the right side? Yeah. So we'll multiply everything by y. And so we're going to get dy over dx equals y times the natural log of x. Do we know what y is? Yeah. What is it? That would be my turn. Okay, so that's what generally happens. If you have a problem that looks really atrocious, like in terms of all of its divisors and everything, you can always apply the natural log to it, expand it out, and then do the derivative, and then you're essentially just multiplying y back to the Nice and easy. Okay, again, more context to the book. Um, so that's all I have for today. Tomorrow we're going to do lots of exponential with some more. I'll stick around for questions if anybody has anything.